Do you have gas? Gear acquisition syndrome? It's easy to get lost in wanting to buy everything there is for landscape photography. But let me show you a few accessories and gadgets that I feel have made a difference in my landscape photography. Or you could just take the anti-gas pills and you don't have to worry about any of this. Let's get started. Well, I've got quite a bit of gear to talk about, but I'm not going to go into great detail on any one specific item, but I am going to just talk generally about these items that I feel have really helped me in my landscape photography. And when I say helped me, help me, help me to get to the areas, help me to capture the image, help me to be comfortable while I was there so that I could capture the best image. So this is kind of a broad range of things, but I'll get started. First off, a tripod. I don't think you can go wrong with having a tripod for landscape photography. Matter of fact, I think it's an essential item. You can start with something that's inexpensive, but the point is get your camera more stable and, uh, and eliminate camera shake. But the thing is, and the old saying is, if you buy nice, you buy once. And I think that's certainly true for tripods, so something to think about. A couple other things that really helped are chairs. You know, I do a lot of hiking and backpacking into areas and I, and I want to be comfortable because a lot of times I'm waiting for sunset or waiting for sunrise. And these little lightweight chairs, this is a Helinox Zero chair, super lightweight. I mean, just easy to pack and uh, something that I think you should consider. I've got another chair. It's a lightweight chair. It's not ultra light Helinox and I've used this mostly. For years I've had this chair. Super quality item here and uh, very comfortable and it swivels. It's great for landscape photography because you can kind of move around and, and really kind of uh, you know hone in on your composition as you're waiting for sunrise or sunset. So something to think about. Uh, a couple other things that, uh, and I'm not, if you watch my videos, you know I talk about knee pads. This is something that I just can't live without. I've got to have knee pads when I'm, well, I don't want to be limited or not be able to get down low because I don't have any pads and I'm on a rocky surface. So that's just something that I think is super important. Some other items uh, that I've learned over the years is having extra memory cards. Even if you think you're not going to need them, I think that's super important to have in your bag. You never know when you're going to fill something up or you've forgotten to reformat your cards and they, the, the information is piled up, the photos have piled up on your camera and you're out in the field and then you reach the end and you don't want to go back and delete everything at that particular point because that's how stuff gets deleted that doesn't need to be deleted. And batteries. Having extra batteries is just critical. And I would, I carry typically one in the camera and two in my bag. Yeah, they're extra weight, but they're certainly worth it. And uh, sometimes when I'm out backpacking, I might bring, you know, chargers or or even a solar array to help charge, but I always, I always carry extra batteries regardless. Now, one of the things that you've probably seen, if you watch my videos, you've probably seen me wear many times, is this little guy. This is a Garmin InReach Mini. It's a satellite communicator, and, and I can link it up with my phone and use the app and actually uh, text back and forth, so, so you can communicate with it. You can't make calls, but you can text. And the texting's really nice, and they have different plans. It's a, it's a service, but you can pause it, and I'll typically pause it during the winter months, and maybe turn it on if I'm planning a hike or something. <clears throat> anyway, it's just something to think about. This, the most important thing about it, is certainly when you're out backpacking or into an area, hiking alone, and I do that frequently, but having this and having the ability to call for help should you need it and send an SOS, this is just super important something that I can't live without and I always take with me when I'm out. Some of the less common things you see uh, landscape photographers do, but occasionally you might. Um, and I like to have a camera uh, rain bag. In my, I carry this and have carried it everywhere and I've, I've used them a couple of times and I know our cameras are weather sealed or many of our cameras are weather sealed, but that doesn't mean I want to stand there and just get you know pounding rain on my camera. But we're really not out shooting that often while the rain is pouring down. It's those light, that light drizzle um, that I think these are really useful for. And that can really build up on your camera. And so this covers up everything. And if you use a lens hood, it covers up everything on your camera. And you really don't have to worry about, um, you know, certainly if you don't have a weather sealed camera, you don't have to worry about it. So I think that's a critical item. Now, uh, uh, if you watch my channel, you know I use a cable release. And a cable release is just, I, I just can't imagine not using this. And I like, I like to capture an image to the best of my ability. 
uh, as, as, as quality as I can, the minimize camera shake, and this certainly goes in helping you minimize camera shake. So this is an essential item and I highly recommend having one. Another item that I picked up later is this view catcher. I actually saw this on a Ben Horn video and I think it was given to him by somebody else, but this allows you to kind of frame up your composition. And I have found this to be really, really handy. Certainly if you're backpacking and you come across the scene and you don't want to take your, your gear off, but you really want to capture, or you really want to frame up an image, or, 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 and you just don't want to get your lens out, this is just a good way to kind of get an idea of what the composition might look like without having to pull your, your camera out. So, I've, and I, I keep this readily available so that I can have this, I don't have to take my backpack off. This is a handy item. So, again, it's a view catcher, and if, um, if you bought one thing, and it's like 10 bucks, if you bought one thing that I talked about, that, I put that at the top of your list. And uh, with that, uh, I've used this, uh, I think it's a Hill People gear. It's just a, a, a little pack that I, I just kind of wear. And if you watch my videos, you, you see me wear this, but it it's just provides a ton of storage. And it's quick access for things that you, you know, don't want to stop to pull out your backpack. And there's lots of uh, um, attachments and areas where you can clip on things like your GPS and just have things available. Uh, maybe I often put my phone in here. And just It's easy to whip this thing out. So handy item. Um, <clears throat> I, I've talked about filters before and, uh, and I, I've talked about L brackets. As a matter of fact, I've done a couple videos on these and I'll link those in the description. But a circular polarizer, if you're not going to have any filters, this is the one you should have though. So if you're not going to have anything else, a circular polarizer, just super, super handy item to have uh, to, to knock down glare off of items or you know, maybe bring some blue into the sky. There's a number of uses for a circular polarizer. An L bracket is, and if you don't know what an L bracket is, basically it just allows you to put your camera on a tripod without having to shift the tripod head and uh, just a good way to go from landscape to portrait orientation very quickly and um, it also provides a little protection for the camera and you can still access all your all your ports on your camera that an L bracket definitely top of my list it's something to consider okay a few other items um, this little guy right here is just a hot shoe a uh, little, little plate that goes in. It's just a cover for your hot shoe. And basically what you do with it is you put it in your hot shoe when you're not using your hot shoe. And as a landscape photographer, I don't use my hot shoe a lot uh, on my main camera. So my video cameras, yeah, I use my hot shoe a lot. So I really don't have one. You, you can get these with a little compass in there too. That's a handy little item to have. But what this really does, it keeps dust out of your hot shoe and it protects the contacts in here from uh, getting unnecessary wear and tear. And it provides support for the actual hot shoe mount. I think uh, I've, I've had one in my camera for years. And I think uh, that's just something that I feel is pretty important. And it's inexpensive. And I've got a few extras. If I lose one, I can just pop it back on. Just something to consider. Oh, well, with that, yeah, I, I, a compass comes in handy as a landscape photographer. You know, when I'm out surveying a site, I want to know, okay, where's the sun coming up? Where's the sun setting? And, and there's apps, and we'll talk about those in a minute, that you can use for that too. Phones have compass. Um, you can have, uh, I've got a Garmin watch that has a compass on it. And I use this for a long time. But there's just something about having an actual compass with you. And I've got much bigger compasses too. But this is just a handy little clip-on. I just kind of put on, put on my pack and or my backpack and just carry along with it. And if I just quickly want to know, you know, where, what direction I'm going north, south, I can, I can just pull this out and, uh, and take a look. So I think um, this handy little tool. Okay, some of the cleaning supplies and what I take with me when I'm out in the field. A rocket blower, a good quality blower, and a blower that, that really um, blows air, but then when you release, it, it kind of brings in air through a filter in the back. Those are handy um, to have. 
and certainly if you're going to clean sensors, that's a whole different uh, story. But uh, those are handy. But just a good quality blower is just really nice for blowing off your lens because you really don't want to clean your lens without blowing it off first. So, and most of the time, I say the best lens cleaning is just don't clean it at all if you don't have to. But uh, just a rocket blower is a quick way to clean up your gear. Some other things, these lens wipe, Zeiss lens, or lens wipes are pretty handy. Just little wet wipes to pull out and clean your lens. But I really don't clean my lens with these much. What I really do is I'll use Dust Patrol sensor cleaner. You can also use it on lens. Or everybody likes Eclipse. You can use Eclipse. Um, Eclipse has the uh, uh, harsh chemical methanol, I think. Maybe it's methanol. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, anyway, harsh chemicals in it. And then the Dust Patrol doesn't have any harsh chemicals so you can fly with this it's non flammable materials I should say and um, with that I'll, I'll use these uh, pec pads now this is what they look like just a little cloth and I'll just take a little of the sensor cleaner just a couple drops on my pec pad after I've blown off my lens clean it up but that's how I clean my lens out in the field and I just carry a few of these lightweight no problem uh, a couple other things with that I found this to be handy just a little Nikon um, microfiber cloth that I picked up and it's just handy to pull on your backpack just pull that out and you can wipe off water off of a lens and uh, just handy to, to have and you can wash these too another thing that I carry with my filter kit is a larger, just kind of, uh, I think it's like 12 by 16 maybe, but uh, it's handy to just kind of throw over your lens if you're out. We talked about that rain cover, but you know sometimes if it's a mist or if I'm shooting at a waterfall, I can just kind of throw that over the camera and uh, maybe just drop it over the lens too or over my filter to keep the water from building up until I'm actually ready to shoot and then I can just kind of pull it back. But I think uh, a microfiber cloth has many, many uses and very important item to have in your bag. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I've, I haven't really mentioned, but screen protectors are handy. And a D800, well, I still have a D800, which actually came with a little cover. And I've, I've kept that on there the whole time I've had this camera um, to keep my screen in good condition. Because I can replace this, this little cover. And on my D850, I basically just put a screen cover over here, just a tempered glass cover. And it's really handy. I can, doesn't prevent me from accessing anything or interacting with the camera. And um, I find that that's just, if I, if I should have an issue where I scratch it up, I can pop those off and put a new one on. And I don't have to scratch up my, my uh, LCD on the camera. So I think those are important too. All right, I'm moving right along here. Sorry to be so quick, but I want to get through all this gear because I think it's super important. Um, now, this may not be essential, but I have them on my cameras, all of them. I've, all, I've had them for years. And these little eye cups are just really awesome for really just cutting down the light um, that, that interferes with the composition. So it really, really helps me see better, the, the better image inside my camera so I actually see what I'm framing up. And I, I find that very valuable. Moving along, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a big light fan. I, I like my lights. You've seen my videos, you've seen me wear these lights. And I've had this one for, I think, a couple of years now. And I will say this, that if, if you're an early morning photographer, but even if you're a sunset photographer, really, these are super important. And certainly if you're hiking or backpacking into areas, because you got to get in one and certainly I'll hike to areas well before sunrise and uh, this just provides uh, different light levels and I can dim it brighten it and and it's very reliable and dependable I can bring extra batteries if I like and they hold the charge for a long time um, I actually get these from lead lenser I, I really buy all my flashlights from lead lenser so uh, yeah I, I think um, having even if it's just a small headlamp in your bag if you're shooting landscape, or excuse me, shooting sunrises or sunsets, yeah, that's super important. All right, a couple other things I'll talk about is camera straps. Now, I don't, I like a camera strap, and this is a, um, uh, what, what is this? A, uh, yep, it's a UP strap, non-slip. And 
I have found this to be the best camera strap. It's a little long, so you can really shoulder it or you can kind of sling it over. And, and I think that's the, that's the way I like to wear it. And I have it on my uh, SLR right now. But, uh, and you can, you can kind of clip these on. You can use some clips uh, to clip these camera straps on so they're easily, you can take them off real easy. But uh, for the most part, I don't use, I don't use those anymore. So I basically, uh, you know, I, I don't want them interfering with my camera while it's on the tripod, so. But uh, camera strap, I think it's, it's, depending on the type of photographer you are, could be a very valuable uh, kit item. So it's definitely something to uh, think about. A um, couple other things that I was going to talk about. Uh, I think I mentioned the L brackets and, oh, yeah. Um, this, uh, I've had this for uh, quite a while, years and years and years. Um, and I, as a landscape photographer, I would say this. A good quality, large hat of some type is just super important as a landscape photographer. And it goes without saying that, uh, you know, you don't want to be out, certainly if you're out hiking to areas and, and, and not having some, something to cover your head is just, uh, yeah, for me, super important. So I would definitely, definitely have that. Well, the last thing I want to talk about is apps. There are a few apps that are just super important. And one app that I use quite a bit is Set My Camera. And Set My Camera is an app that just helps me um, check my depth of field. If I want to know what the hyperfocal distance is, I'll use this app first. And uh, just, I've been using it for years and it's a, it's a very nice app and I, I really like using it. So I would, I would uh, say, check it out and see what you think of it. Another app that I think is uh, super great and I use it quite a bit is uh, the pho uh, Photographer's Ephemeris. The app's called TPE. But one of the things I use with it is Skyfire. Now there's an extra subscription to Skyfire. I think it's $30 a year, $29 a year. But Skyfire basically allows me to forecast out to about four days um, what, what the sky is gonna be like. And that has, has really proven to be pretty accurate. So it's not always perfect. It might give you low predictions of a great sky and then you get out and it's a great sky. And then sometimes, you know, it might be a couple hours lagging and then within a couple hours of the shoot, you can see, oh, well, hey, it's going to be pretty good. Let me get going. So, but, but overall, I think it's a really great app to use. And um, last app that I think is just super important is PhotoPills. PhotoPills has some really great tools in it. Um, the, the augmented reality allows you to see where the sun is uh, for sunrise and sunset in reference to your location. And I mean, that is just fantastic. And uh, I really use that quite a bit, so I really like that app. And uh, you know, of course, all these tell you what time sunrise is going to come and sunset and uh, moon moon positions and uh, conditions and all those things. Star trails that that you might be into as a landscape photographer. Uh, Photo pills definitely a good app for that. Well, like I mentioned earlier, it's easy to get lost in all this gear, and certainly if you're a new photographer and starting out, um, I think this. I wouldn't, don't focus a whole lot on gear. Uh, you know, other than a camera and a tripod, really you're all set. Get out and start taking some pictures. And as you go, you'll pick up items. You'll learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you. These are some items that, that I feel have really worked for me. And most of these, if not all of them, I, I can't live without. So, uh, or I don't want to live without, I'll just say it that way. But anyway, something to think about when, when, uh, when it comes to gear. And it's kind of these accessories and gadgets but some of these can really make all the difference in your photography and can certainly, can certainly help out in your photography. So definitely things to consider, keep in mind. I hope some of this was, uh, was beneficial to you and was able to help you out, maybe make some decisions or maybe if you're starting out, maybe help you get that initial uh, kit going. So I hope I was able to do that. But anyway, um, hey, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing and drop me a comment and let me know what you thought. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail.